my husband is making videos on computer science and board games, and both of my sons are making videos on video games. And I don't want to be the only one in my family who's not making videos. So, greetings, party enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Teagall 3D. In today's episode, we are going to talk about wine cork turkeys. Uh, today, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about the project and how you can uh, print wine cork turkeys of your own. And then I'm going to go ahead and talk about a little snippet of slicing, um, particularly for people who um, may have smaller print beds. And then for those of you who are interested, I'll talk a little bit, a uh, bit on Blender, um, specifically on uh, something to consider when you're rotating objects. All right, well, this is an apt project to talk about today because it is late November, uh, which is when the U.S. celebrates its Thanksgiving holiday, and that is a very turkey-centric holiday. Uh, this project uh, incorporates two elements that you've seen before uh, in my work. Uh, first off, it does have uh, color changes. So we've seen me do a lot of color changes before, uh, and that's the same here with the head. And it also incorporates in upcycling. Uh, so it, before, you've seen me use projects incorporating in soda cans and carrot K-cups. Um, this time is another wine cork project. Uh, if you use both tails of this project, uh, I'll use 24 wine corks all together. This is my first model that I've uploaded to PursuitPrinters.org, the model sharing site. So if it is something that you are interested into in incorporating into your Thanksgiving decor, hey, have at it. There are two versions of this project. Uh, the first one, all the pieces are standalone. Uh, so you can print the ones that you want and you can glue them together at the very end. Uh, both Pro, uh, both versions of this project, uh, the tails have holes in them where you can insert the wine corks as needed. Um, me, as a heads up, uh, my mom has very specific wine tastes and all of her corks are synthetic. So that's all we've tested them in. Um, I tend to angle them into the tail. If I do have a tricky cork, I tend to pinch the end, um, squeeze it, and then insert it, which goes a lot better. So hopefully if you're using uh, traditional corks, uh, it works just as well for you, hopefully. The standalone version is really good if you're, um, this is going to be, the corks are going to be a permanent fixture, because um, once you glue the pieces together, I think I have a glued one right here, I imagine it's going to be pretty difficult to get these corks out and back in if you want to replace them. So if you're expecting your wine cork collection to evolve and you want your turkey to evolve with it, I also have a version uh, where he comes with uh, rails and the pieces can slide apart and slide back together. Uh, the tail, when you're printing it, the rails are um, angled. They're 45 degree angles. So you do have the choice if you want to print it uh, flat on your bed um, to maybe speed up the printing printer time a little bit. Uh, you could also print it upright on the bed, which would save uh, some support material because you'd really only need support on these two bottom cork holes. The head, of course, I always recommend uh, printing flat uh, for the color changes. So in my case, you know, I print the brown. I'll put the exact measurements down below in the comments. Uh, it's also on the perusaprinters.org listing. But I do the brown and then the white and then the black and then the orange and then the little uh, burgundy or red for the white. Model. Now for a quick slicing snippet. If you're working with a printer with a smaller bed, uh, here in this example I'm working with an iMade 3D Jelly Box 2, which I believe its bed is 170 millimeters by 160 millimeters. If you're working with the same kind of situation, you probably want to stick with just one tail for your turkey. And then you don't necessarily have to immediately give up when you import in that first tail and you see that it doesn't fit. So, just think back to our old school geometry days. Uh, you could think of our bed like as two triangles. So here's like the diagonal across our bed. And the hypotenuse of a triangle, the, di the diagonal, is larger than its parts. So let's go over here and we'll go rotate this guy about 45 degrees. And let's try to move it on. And there you go, now it fits on our bed. Yay, geometry! Now on the 3D modeling side, here's a 
bit of Blender. Uh, this is what my project looks like uh, in Blender 2.9. Um, I have my head, I have my first tail, and you can see I'm in progress of working on the second tail here. I have my placeholders, even though I'm not going to print them, I have placeholders of the corks, and the main reason is I'm going to use them to subtract um, uh, holes into the tail so we can um, have the little holes where the corks are actually going to go. So uh, working on this on the second tail, and you know, I have some collections here. Let's go ahead and turn off the first tail and the head so we have a better view here. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to copy this cork placeholder and I kind of want to rotate it by 10 degrees going all the way around. Uh, in Blender, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. I can also hold down the Shift D key as a shortcut and it makes a, a copy of it. I hit Escape, it's still there. Now, if I want to rotate it, I'll say um, R for rotate, and I want to rotate over the X axis, so I'm going to hit X, and I'm going to type in 10. And you can see it's not rotating the 10 degrees as I expect over my tail. Uh, where it's rotating right now is this little red, a uh, little yellow dot, that's the point of origin of my object, and that's what Blender is uh, rotating uh, around by default. Uh, luckily, I can change that. Now, historically, what I do um, is I just can change this point of origin to where I want it to be. So um, we have the 3D cursor, which we can click and move around. Uh, also, if we go in the view menu here on the right, we can type in specific coordinates of the 3D cursor. And I know my cylinder, you know, just from my working on it, I know my cylinder is at the x, x, um, x50. I think I can also see it from here. I can see my location of my cylinder. It's 50 millimeters down on the x-axis. And so that's probably where I want my 3D cursor to go. Um, and then it's making it easy. It's zero on the x, uh, z-axis and zero on the y-axis too. It's easy peasy. So I can go here and type in my exact coordinates of where I want my 3D cursor to be. Okay. Now here I have two choices. Uh, so this is my new pivot point that I want to rotate around ideally. So uh, what I could do here is I click on my cork object and I can go under object and set origin and say, hey, your new, or new origin is going to be where the 3D cursor is right now. And I click on that and you can see the little yellow dot moved over here. And then at this point, when I go ahead and uh, duplicate and then do my, I hit R and then X for the X axis and I do um, my negative 10 degrees. Now it's rotating over that point. There's another little shortcut you can do if you're not comfortable changing the whole point of origin of your object, which there, you can always change it back. I'll do it right now. Uh, you can always say, hey, object set origin and set it back to the center of mass. And there, there it goes. So if you don't want to mess with your object's point of origin, up here is a little um, chain kind of icon. And you can click on that, and you can say this is where the pivot point's going to be. Um, you have a lot of different choices, and here again, you can just choose 3D cursor. And so it'll be the same thing, where I can go ahead and duplicate. Then I can R, X, uh, oops, try that again. So now I can go and duplicate it, and do R, X, uh, negative 10 degrees, and then I could just keep going. X, negative 10 degrees, and I'm using your menu option just for your benefit, but I could do shift uh, D and then RX, negative 10 degrees. So anyways, that's just a little bit of blender of keeping in mind when you're rotating objects that you have to be sensitive to your pivot point um, or you can hack it with changing your point of origin of the object. Well, thank you for watching. If you do try to tackle this project, uh, I'd love to see how it turns out for you and hopefully those real wine corks will fit. Um, and if you do, if this inspires any other projects like maybe a uh, Santa with a cork beard, I'd like to see that as well. Uh, I hope everybody has a great day. And if in, you're in the US, happy Thanksgiving.